Hi everyone, thank you for joining me Debbie at carryedcards.co and today I'm going to be showing you how I made this card. All sparkly, I hope the light picks that up for the camera. Started off with a 6 inch by 6 inch card blank. Don't worry about any of the measurements, I will put them onto my blog carryadcards.co Cut a piece of Whisper White for the first layer. I've cut that to 14 centimetres by 14 centimetres. I've cut a second piece of Whisper White to 12 centimetres by 12 centimetres. Now that's quite a bit smaller than I normally go. But the reason for that, hopefully you can see that I've got two embossed lines on the first layer and I wanted this raised section to sit inside those embossed lines. And then I've cut a piece of Knight of Navy card to 11.7 centimetres by 11.7 centimetres. I wanted it to be just slightly smaller than the Whisper White because I'm going to put it behind and I didn't want any risk of the Navy card sticking out um, from beneath the Whisper White. Right, so we'll start working on the layers first. And the first thing we're going to do is take the larger layer and just do our embossed lines. So I've got my Simply Scored board, I've put my good side of the card face down and I'm laying the card flat up against the edges, taking my stylus that comes with it. That's the edge groove, so I'm going to go one in from the edge and just take my stylus down. Turn my card 180 degrees and again find the groove one in, take your stylus down, turn it again, I said 180 degrees, I meant 90 degrees, goodness me, oh, I should know my angles by now shouldn't I? And I'm on the last side, okay so now if you can see that we've got one emboss line but I'm going to do two, so I'm going to put it back down, that's the groove I worked with, I'm going to go one more groove in and take it down one more line. Turn it 90 degrees, not 180, 90. And again, just go in one. And again. So you're just going around the whole card two times. Now I've gone right to the edges of the card this time because it gives me, I'm hoping you can pick that up, the light is quite bright, but a, a sort of a basket weave effect that I just thought would be quite nice. So hopefully you can see that. Okay, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to punch the stars layer out here using the confetti stars punch. So I take my piece, my 12 centimeter by 12 centimeter whisper white card and I'm going to just pop that in. So this is the confetti star punch pop it right to the back of the punch and press down. Now you'll find your own way of doing this. I find it a lot easier for some reason to take it to the right hand side. I find the pattern matches a bit easier and you'll see there are stars here and you're looking as you move across to find an exact match where that the holes you've punched out exactly line up with the stars underneath and for some reason for, for me, I don't know about anybody else, they seem to line up better when I do it to the right hand side first. Whoops, I'm sitting a bit far back and trying to do this from an angle. Then you've got more of a punch out on the left side when you come to take that over and I don't know if it's just my imagination but I find that works for me. So again, I'm just lining the stars up here. When I've got them lined up, trouble is I'm sitting far back, so it's, I don't think I've quite, I think I've almost got it. That's close enough, okay. Right, so that's the stars punched out. And when we put the Knight and Navy card underneath, we suddenly get a night sky. Now the next thing that I want to do is emboss this um, star effect here and for that I've used the Stamping Up Lucky Stars folder. So what I'm going to do is line this up here. There is an edge pattern there so I'm going to line that up 
sort of over the punched out stars so it's not quite so visible as a cut off star. I'm going to fetch my big shot here. I've got my standard platform and I don't want any tabs because I'm going to be embossing. My wonderful, <laughs> completely well used plates. Oh, I really am going to have to get the new set out soon. Okay, I'm going to pop that on there, pop the plate on top and just run that through the big shot. Take the plates out, take the platform out and pop the big shot away. Okay, and then once I take my folder off, you can see I've got the Lucky Stars star, um, what do you say, the impressions showing. Okay, so we've now got two layers of card almost ready. What I want to do now is use Knight of Navy and a finger sponge dauber. You can use a standard sponge if you want. And I'm just going to go around the edge very quickly. Just pop a little bit of colour on. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I've got white on white, which always looks lovely, but this just helps the layers pop out a bit just gives them that extra little bit of lift. So you don't need to put too much on, so we're not aiming for a, a blue card as such. Just enough to lift it from the base card. And there, that's all of the blue sponging done. Next thing I'm going to do is bring in my Knight of Navy card. And I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue onto this to stick it. I'm not going to put it onto the Knight of Navy card because it may, if it goes where the stars are, it will show through. So I'm just going to pop a little bit around the edges, down to the sides. And then I will pop a little bit where the stars have been cut out, but being careful not to actually put it directly where there is a star punched out. Well obviously I can't because there's nothing there but you know what I mean. We don't want it to show through. So I'm just going to pop that on making sure that the navy edges aren't showing beneath the card. You can see there. So it fits just by cutting it slightly smaller it fits perfectly inside. Right the next thing I'm going to do is pop a little bit of our gorgeous one eighth of an inch silver ribbon around here. I'm trying to get all these bits done before I start work on the trees. Okay. Right over left. The trouble is the more it goes wrong the more I start getting myself into a tease. <laughs> okay right over left, left over right, don't let go of the ribbon. <laughs> well obviously I've got to let go but I mean don't let, let it go too loose. There. That's reasonable. It's probably not the best knot in the world. And just cut yourself some little tails. There. I shall be content with that. It's probably about the best I'm going to manage at the moment. Okay, now I'm going to actually assemble this onto the card because then all we've got left to do are the trees, the star and the greeting. But by putting this on, I'm gonna feel I'm progressing. So, little bit of glue. I'm using glue. You can use double sided, fast fuse, snail, whatever you want. As I say in all my videos, entirely up to you. So, popping the first layer on, and you can see that navy inking around the edge just makes that stand out. Now, for this one, I want this one to be raised, so I'm going to use some dimensionals just to raise it up off the card. And as ever, I always put far too many on. These should come with a warning, do not use too many, because you don't need them. But <laughs> it still doesn't stop me. I still have to put lots on. I'm sure I'd cover the whole card if somebody let me get away with it. Okay. 
this is where you really need some nails to be able to get these off. They do come off quite easily. But again, because I'm on camera, I get all of a dither. Right. So, oh, nearly put it the wrong way up. We want our stars at the top. That's our night sky. And then this should just fit in nicely into that space. There. Perfect. Okay. Right, I'm going to stamp my greeting so it's got time to dry because I tend to get a bit smudgy with greetings <laughs> if I'm not careful because they haven't dried. I'm just using one, it's from a retired set. I'm really sorry about that, but it is gorgeous. If ever you get the chance to get hold of this, it's worth it, it's gorgeous. More merry messages and I'm just using the Happy Christmas. It's one of those where there is a, mess a message for any type of Christmas card. You'll find one that just fits. Oh, I probably didn't stamp that as well as I could have. That's not a problem. Because we can just do it again. That's much better. Okay, I'm going to pop that off on one side to dry. Now we've got our trees to do. So I'm going to bring in some card. I've got my embossing buddy, which I'm going to just run over there so that I don't get any risk of getting any finger marks or any static. I'm going to use the Festival of Trees set and I'm going to use that stamp and that stamp. You can obviously choose whichever ones you want. And I'm just stamping the two because I've just punched that one out of silver glitter paper. So I'm going to get my Versamark ink and ink up the first stamp I'm going to pop that fairly near the edge because I find if I don't put it close enough to the edge you have to cut a bit off to make it fit perfectly with the, the coordinating tree punch so I'll pop that one over there the Versamark ink's brilliant um, it doesn't dry very quickly, in fact you can leave it for quite a while, so it's not like normal ink, you don't have to panic. Okay, and just stamp the other one. Such a beautiful set. These trees are really gorgeous. You can see me using these for many years to come. Right, get a little bit of scrap paper or card just so you can catch your embossing powder. I've used Stamping Up Silver embossing powder. It's beautiful. It's one of the only ones I've used, and I have used many, that doesn't clump and clog. It just, it's just gorgeous, it really is. It just dries smoothly. And just do the other one. They're lovely. Okay, I'm just going to pop my embossing powder back in before I risk sneezing or doing something really daft and getting it everywhere. And then I'm going to get my heat tool and bring that in and just fix these in place. Okay, I'm just going to switch my heat tool on so you may not be able to hear me just for a minute. and it should change quite quickly. You'll see it suddenly start to go. There we are. Once it starts, it just happens very quickly. Oh, I do love this technique, as you've probably gathered. I'm just going to take my coordinating tree punch, which works perfectly with this set, and you can buy the tree punch and the festival of trees as a bundle and if you buy the two together you save 15% so if you like the look of this set it's definitely worth getting the tree punch as well because it does give you that flexibility like I'm going to do in a minute of just cutting straight out onto card which is more difficult to do if you haven't got the punch just simply because you haven't got the shape there to start with. It's not so bad cutting out something like this where you can see the shape but then even then it's difficult to get the perfect um, amount of white all the way round if you're doing it by hand. It really is easier. 
using the punch. So I'm just going to take some silver glitter paper and just punch out that. And then I've got the star from the Itty Bitty punch set. You get three little punches. They're so diddy and cute and tiny and the star is lovely and works perfectly with this card. So I'm now going to put these onto here and I'm going to attach the central one first. I'm just going to lay these on to make sure that I've got enough room before I commit. And it's always a good idea to do the central one first and then you can move things around as you go. Right, so dimensionals. Let's pop a couple onto there. Not three, as I'm trying to do now. Oh, come on off, you horrible backing. Now, <laughs> you'll have to excuse me. I'm, as I say many times, I am sitting back quite a bit, just so you don't get the top of my head in the video. But I haven't got a very clear view when I'm trying to line things up. Things look slightly um, angled. So... From where I'm sitting, they look straight, but of course from where you're sitting, like that, I can see that's not straight. <laughs> from where you are, you can tell that um, I'm not getting them as they should be. Right, so that's nearly done. Oh, come off, come off, come off. There must be a trick to getting these off. They shouldn't be, <laughs> they shouldn't be so challenging for me. Okay, let's just get the last one lined up. Does that look about right? I think it does. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> now, what you can do is take a bit of a dimensional and cut it, but I just happen to have some teeny tiny foam pads, which I'm going to put there because you don't want the foam pad showing behind the tree. So either cut a bit of a dimensional or if you've got a little bit of foam pad or a bit of silicon glue, ooh, and then you can pop that actually onto the tree. I've just done mine slightly above. The very last thing that we need to do is our greeting. So I'm going to use my modern label punch because that just fits this one perfectly. So pop it in there, line it up. I do love the modern label punch. Just adds a bit of interest to a card and when you haven't got a lot of space for a greeting, it works perfectly. A little bit of Knight of Navy and I'm going to attach my greeting onto my Knight of Navy. That's the one I punched earlier that wasn't quite right. And I'm going to put this at a jaunty little angle like that. And let's pop a couple of dimensionals onto here. There we go. And it's the greeting that you want to make sure you've got lined up. Don't let your eye sort of try to make that straight if you're going to use this technique. Just make sure you're looking at the greeting itself and that that's straight. And then the little bit of navy that comes underneath will go down at an angle. And there you have it. That's the Festival of Trees card with the confetti star punch and the lucky stars embossing folder. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for joining me. And it's goodbye from Debbie at carryadcards.co.